All right, in the next couple videos, we are going to be looking at chapter five, section two, specifically proving trig identities. Now this is heavily related to what we just finished talking about in 5.1. So if you have not yet done so, please finish your 5.1 homework. Um, take the quick check 5.1B. When you're watching this, this will be available for you to see. Take this blank quick check, right? Time yourself, give yourself eight minutes and see how much you can do within eight minutes. And then go ahead and look at the solutions that are here for you to check your work. Oh no, don't look at it. Try it on your own first, right? And then watch these videos where we are gonna be talking about proving trig identities. So an identity we've already talked about, right? It's simply a statement of two expressions that are equal, right? So this expression here, sine of x times cotangent of x plus cosine of x times tangent of x, this expression is equivalent to cosine of x plus sine squared x, right? This is an example of an identity. Um, for all values of the independent variable in the domain of each expression, right? So all x is here, all x is here, right? They have to match up. So to prove an identity, you start with the expression on one side of the equation and simplify it or manipulate it, and sometimes it's unsimplifying it, until you get the expression on the other side. So each intermediate step or transformation must yield an expression that is equivalent to the original expression. So in general, it's usually easier to begin with the more complicated looking side, the more complicated expression, and transform it into the simpler looking one. Um, if it's not clear how you should start to make them equivalent, start by rewriting everything in terms of sine and cosine. And we're going to see some algebraic tricks in the process. So start storing away what tricks we use. So for instance, ever if we ever have rational expressions, so numerator and denominators, try and get common denominators. Now, warning, when it comes to proving trig identities, some students start with the equation and manipulate both sides at the same time, right? They treat it as if they're solving an equation. That is not what we are doing. So we manipulate one side of the statement as we're trying to prove it is true. So we can't assume it's true. We can't start with the equal sign and use properties of equality, like adding the same thing to both sides or multiplying both sides by the same thing. We can't do that. So to make that a little bit more clear, um, let me scroll down, right? Example, if you were being asked to prove this trig identity that I just showed you up there, the correct way to start would be to start with one side of the equation and now start simplifying this expression. An incorrect way to start the problem would be to just copy it right down with both sides equal and then manipulate it from here. That's wrong. So we're going to start with one side and work on getting it to be equal to the other side. So it's almost like you could almost set yourself up like this. Let's prove this identity. So I'm going to start with sine of x times cosine, co, sorry, cotangent of x plus cosine of x times tangent of x. And I want to say that's equal to something, equal to something, equal to something. And eventually I want to get it equal to this side, cosine of x plus sine squared of x. So maybe put this like at the bottom corner so you know what you're aiming towards. All right, so the hint here is, well, rewrite everything in terms of sine and cosine. That was one of our suggestions. So cotangent of x is cosine of x over sine of x. Tangent of x is sine of x over cosine of x. And so once you do that, well, I can do some pretty nice simplification right here. All right, and I can say, well, then this is equal to sine of x times cosine of x over sine of x plus just sine of x, right? And then if I distribute here. Well, that expression is then equivalent to, what do I have? I've got, I'm going to write a ridiculously extra step that you wouldn't need to actually write, but because I gave myself the space to do it, I'm going to do it. All right, plus sine of x times sine of x. And what is this? Lo and behold, those cancel out. And what am I left with? This is equivalent to cosine of x plus sine squared of x. So did I just prove 
that the left side equals the right side. Sure did. Proved it. I'm done. So that's what proving an identity is going to look like. So totally jumped too fast. Let's look at this next example here. All right, so every trig function is part of one of the Pythagorean identities, meaning sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. So sine and cosine are part of that identity. Cotangent is part of the cotangent squared plus one is equal to cosecant squared. So cosecant and cotangent are part of a trig ident a Pythagorean identity. And then secant squared is equal to one plus tangent squared. So those two, secant and tangent, are part of a Pythagorean identity. And so often we can use the algebra identity, the difference of squares, how it factors, to transform an expression into one in which one of our Pythagorean identities with squares can be used. So let's prove this identity here. So again, how do we start? We pick the more complicated looking side. And believe it or not, I think tangent and secant are slightly more complicated looking. So I'm going to start with that. So I'm going to say tangent of x plus secant of x equals. Now, what is this equivalent to? Well, tangent is equivalent to sine of x over cosine of x plus secant of x is 1 over cosine of x. So do I have a common denominator here? Yeah. So I can say this is equivalent to sine of x plus 1 all over cosine of x. Now, I'm trying to get this to look like this. So what can we do? So this is where we're going to use one of our algebra tricks. And I'm going to say, well, what do I want in my denominator? I would really like to change the color first. I really want 1 minus sine of x in my denominator. So what if I just, this is equivalent, if I just multiply 1 minus sine x to the top and the bottom, right? And multiplying by 1. So that's going to be equivalent. And then that's going to give me what? Cosine of x times 1 minus sine of x. Here, when I multiply, well, 1 times 1 is 1. Uh, 1 times negative sine x is negative sine x. 1 times positive sine x is positive. So those cancel out. And then I'm going to have sine minus sine squared x. Well, hey, is that one of our trig identities? Yeah, remember a side aside, right? Sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. So what happens if I subtract sine squared x from both sides minus sine squared x? I get cosine squared x is equal to 1 minus sine squared x. Woohoo! So what is this all equal? This is equal to cosine squared x. I'm going to, I ran out of room, so I'm going to do this down here. So that's equal to cosine squared x all over my, my denominator. And are we seeing how it's going to fall out really nicely? Cosine of x times 1 minus sine of x. And so, again, what is that equivalent to? Well, I can divide out my cosine of x and say, hey, that is equivalent to cosine of x all over what I wanted, 1 minus sine of x. Identity proven, done. I started with the left side. I wrote equivalence, I did some algebra manipulation, and I ended up with the right side. So let me just erase this real fast, because that goes down to there. Okay, so do we get the, get the idea? Feeling okay with some of these trig identities? All right, let's do a few more. So what I would encourage you to do is if you feel like you understand the basic principle behind this, go ahead and pause the video right now and try some of these on your own, right? What am I gonna do? So which of these looks more complicated? I think this looks more complicated, so I would encourage you to start here. And what are you gonna do to try and eventually get it to look like this? Get a common denominator and kind of follow where it leads. But please, go ahead and pause the video right now, try some of these on your own, and then unpause and watch me work through them. Okay, so you're back. Here I am. I'm going to start with my left side here and say that's 1 over 1 minus cosine of x plus 1 over 1 plus cosine of x is equal to, well, I want to get a common denominator. So I know I would have to multiply this by 1 plus cosine of x. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that. 1 plus 
cosine of x all over 1 minus cosine of x times 1 plus cosine of x, right? See how I just multiplied this guy by 1 plus cosine of x on the top and the bottom? And that's going to be added to 1 plus cosine of x in the denominator. And if I multiply top and bottom here by 1 minus cosine of x, I'm going to have 1 minus cosine of x. Alrighty, so then what is this all equivalent to? Well, I've got a common denominator, so I'm going to go and write that, right? 1 plus cosine of x times 1 minus cosine of x. Here, when I add these, I get 1 plus 1 is 2. Here I've got cosine minus cosine is gone, so it's just 2. So in this case, rather than, well, no, we'll just keep going. Now I'm going to multiply out my denominator because I've got the 2. I see the 2 there. So I want to get to cosecant squared, and I think you can probably see how that's going to fall, fall out. But let's just keep going. That's 2 all over. When I multiply this out, I'm going to have 1 plus cosine x minus cosine x cancel. So I've got minus cosine squared x. So that's going to equal 2 over 1 minus cosine squared x. Again, we're going to use our Pythagorean identity that says sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So if I subtract cosine squared from both sides, this thing here is equal to sine squared x. Well, okay, to be really thorough, that's just 1 over sine of x quantity squared. This is the very definition of cosecant. So this is 2 times cosecant squared x. And check. Did I make the left side equal the right side? Yes. And I'm done. All right. How about this guy? So again, which side is more complicated? They're both kind of complicated, but let's start with this guy, right? 1 over tangent of theta plus 1 over cotangent of theta. Well, first, let's rewrite this. Well, 1 over tangent of theta, that's the reciprocal of cotangent theta, right? Plus 1 over cotangent is tangent theta. So could I start with that? Sure. And then let's write this cotangent is cosine of theta over sine of theta plus tangent is sine of theta over cosine of theta. So now I've got two fractions that I want to get a common denominator for. So if I multiply top and bottom here by cosine, right, that's going to give me cosine squared theta all over sine theta cosine theta sine theta times cosine theta plus if I multiply top and bottom here by sine, right? That's going to give me sine squared theta all over cosine theta times sine theta. And so I've got a common denominator. So this is all going to equal sine theta over cosine theta. And when I combine my numerators, what's cosine squared plus sine squared? That's just 1. Well, so this is the same thing as 1 over sine theta times 1 over cosine theta. And that's cosecant theta times secant theta. And is that not the... Okay, let's change the order. So that is secant theta times cosecant theta. Check. Identity proved. Good? All right, so we've got a few more, but that's where I'm going to stop for this video. If you haven't tried any of these on your own yet, please, before you start the next video, try these on your own, and we'll go over them.